comes to your mental health, there's more and more awareness of it now, but because people can't see it, people will just assume you're okay. People can give you like all the hacks in the world, like you need to grind, you don't need to sleep more. No, you need to prioritize yourself. Make sure that you are okay. What's a priority for you is doing that. Preeti, thank you so much for being here. No, it's my pleasure. For those people who are just learning about you today, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So I'm Preeti. I have a podcast too. Um, so I started my podcast in 2020 and it's called It's Pretty Personal. And the whole idea behind it is to share and amplify South Asian stories. Yeah. But not only that, it's also about like being South Asian, being in your 20s, just like navigating life. I think like when I was listening to podcasts, I was just so confused because I can never hear another perspective. Mm -hmm. I could hear a South Asian perspective or I could hear a girl in her 20s perspective. Right. But there was never like a blend between the two. And I think like this is kind of like, like especially when it comes to like your mid to late 20s, that's kind of the time where things get so much more confusing because like everyone's path is so different. Yeah, yeah. And you do start to kind of navigate like, what am I doing with life or what's happening you want to educate yourself about certain topics or sometimes you just want to listen to someone else who has a similar story to you so that you can relate that like whatever it is like my, the whole idea behind the podcast is to basically be a voice and a platform to help other South Asians especially South Asian females you recorded your first episode was it May 2020 yeah so aside from the fact that you were probably getting used to the whole COVID lockdown pandemic yeah, yeah, situation, yeah. what was going on in your life at the time? What were you doing? So I've always been like the girl who's like had so many hobbies. Like I've always kept myself busy. So like before my podcast, I was actually a bungra dancer and I did bungra for from 2015 onwards and then before that I had a radio show. So there's always been something there and I think with me it's like, Bungra stopped and then I was like oh okay then lockdown happened and by the way I had the idea for my podcast back in 2019 I was just too scared to do it right. like I was just a bit like procrastinating I was like oh my god like I don't know I don't know anyone else that has a podcast do I really want to share my story what will the whole like what will people think like is such a big thing within especially the South Asian community I was so worried about what random aunties and stuff people who don't even know what a podcast is um like their opinions like things like that so I, it was always in the back of my mind but I didn't think I ever told anyone about it and then it was only when lockdown happened when I actually did have the time and I couldn't keep lying to myself and be like yeah like I can't do it I'm so busy yeah there was nothing to do yeah yeah, yeah. um so then I was kind of just like okay like effort let me just do it and I kind of just like started doing it and like researching watching YouTube videos listening to other podcasts and it actually is dead genuinely the thing that like got me through lockdown because being someone who's very like active always having hobbies like being at home and doing nothing is like yeah. my worst nightmare yeah so yeah. and I get really like agitating and fidgety and it's like oh I should be doing something I should be doing something and so me being able to kind of create my podcast and like you know that excitement you feel when you create a project from scratch and you're just like I can do this and this and you start thinking and you get really really excited like that was the feeling like that you I end had. up like building your own momentum to it quite naturally yeah you're like I want it to be this color I'm gonna design it like this I'm gonna like talk about this and it, I felt so inspired but more importantly I think it was because like it genuinely felt like there was nothing out there and I know how much it would have helped me like five years like when I was like maybe in my early 20s I wish I had someone that I can like listen to who's gone through similar experiences to me so I would feel less alone mm -hmm. who has a very similar story to me and that's what I wanted to be for like other girls so that also really drove me to like continue doing it mm -hmm. but yeah honestly like do my like starting that podcast and like recording that first episode and like starting that momentum of it like it genuinely saved me from lockdown. And you mentioned a bit about how you had that period of procrastination mm. and a little bit of fear of what other people might think. Oh, yeah, 100%. So what was sort of your mindset when you got over that? I think it was like a bunch of different things. I think this is going to sound really weird, but like any big life decision, sometimes I just have like a moment and I'm like, I feel I'm just going to do it. Okay. And just see what happens. Yeah. But it takes a while to like get to that. I think in terms of my mindset, I think it was almost like a, I knew that I would regret it if I didn't 
do it mm -hmm. and it was almost like it was a lot of like talking to myself to be like okay cool why are you scared like what is the reason like I, but the thing was like I could either like and it was kind of like a crossroads because I could be like okay I can either stay in this state of fear and not do it mm -hmm. but whopping if I do it and it turns out to be really well mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. and or whopping if I do it and it doesn't work at least I tried it and I think for me it was almost like the idea of at least I tried it yeah and that kind of like also was like it took me a while to get there mm -hmm. don't get me wrong mm -hmm. but I think it was also the fact that like yeah lockdown and having nothing to do but also like trying to get over that fear yeah because otherwise I would have been stuck in the same place I think also like I can understand there's even a more of an added fear when you are the first in kind of what it is you're trying to create. Like you mm. said, you never really found another podcast that was doing what you were doing. So you're almost the person leading it right, and deciding about what, what that yeah. is going to look like for you rather than having someone to sort of look and get ideas yeah. from or just inspiration from. So when it came to planning the podcast, like how did that process work for you? I read like a lot of articles, like just simple things like, how to get it on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, like how to edit an episode. I like how to create a logo. I made my logo myself. I watched a YouTube video on Photoshop and I did it myself. Cool. Like things like that. So I think that also really helped. But I think in the planning side of it, it was like, I think it's because like, I've done stuff like that in the past, like mm -hmm. planning and creating projects. I think for me, that was the most exciting thing. It was like, okay, what colors is it going to be? What logo is it going to be? What are the topics we're going to talk about? Solo, not solo guess no guess like what is the vibe that I want it to be and I kind of just like every single time I had an idea mostly in the shower I would like write it as soon as I can because otherwise I'll forget mm -hmm. and I think having that like what's the word having that like compilation of all these different ideas that mm -hmm. really helped me kind of figure out the direction because I kept having the same ideas over and over and over again that kind of was a bit like okay cool so that means I definitely want to go into that direction right right and it's hard to ignore as well when yeah. you get that inspiration come a bit quite a bit yeah um when it came to setting up your podcast what were those initial challenges that you faced I was the biggest challenge to myself I think I almost put so much pressure on myself to like make it perfect mm -hmm. as well so it was almost like a I remember my first episode I think I recorded like three times like because I just was such a perfectionist about it um and I was like after that time I was like it's fine like it's okay but I think that was also it also because I had no expectations of what like I didn't know anything about the podcast space I didn't know where it was gonna go and that was exciting but sometimes also really scary because then you can't really plan and I'm definitely a planner so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that also was a little bit like I don't know what's going to happen. But the one thing that I will say that the podcast community that's like around me, like everyone is so nice. Everyone is so helpful, super collaborative. No one's in competition with each other. Like everyone has their own niche. Everyone has their own podcast. I think for me, I've just felt like I'm really lucky in that sense that like everyone's really supportive. Everyone's super nice. Like everyone was willing to like help out things like that and I genuinely feel like I've made such good friends through it. Touching on that other challenge that you mentioned about what will people think and what yeah. people say, what was your experience of what people said afterwards? Was it as bad as what you thought it would be? Oh no, literally like I think it was so much worse in my head. Right, right. I think like when I started and I remember like I think I did, I released my Instagram maybe like two weeks before I released my first podcast episode and it grew super quickly and I was like oh my god like how is it already at like a thousand followers like what the f <laughs> and everyone was messaging me to be like especially like my friends and like people in my stuff and like this is incredible like well done this is so exciting we'll definitely tune in like there was no one bad negative comment so i so for like the past like nine months when i was just freaking myself out to be like oh my god what what will people think like people are gonna judge me people are gonna like say bad things about me no one said nothing mm -hmm. like literally and i was mm -hmm. like now i'm like kicking myself i'm like 
should have just done it then. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, I think it's something that everybody, everyone faces there when you start putting yourself out there a bit. And also like the topics that you discuss on your podcast and you draw on your own personal experiences as well. Um, it, it's, it can be a challenge. It can be nerve wracking. When you started your podcast, you also linked a lot of that into love as well. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I'm really curious to know what was it about that particular topic that drew you in and made you want to start talking about because it? Because as South Asians, we do not talk about it, right? Like growing up, and I would love to know your experience as well. Growing up, like Bollywood movies is the most unrealistic expectation <laughs> of love. <laughs> How are you supposed to fall in love over a song? Like a three minute song. <laughs> It's not that easy. <laughs> it's not that easy. But that's the thing that like, no one talks about it. I think for me and in my family, like growing up, dating was never mentioned. It was almost like when you get married. Mm -hmm. But no one tells you how to go from being single to being married. And not everyone wants to be married. Like we're in a generation now where like there are so many independent women that want to do stuff by themselves. And the thought of marriage isn't where they want to be in life right now. There's a lot, women have so much more opportunities in terms of furthering their career. And maybe mm. that's what they want. I think like the idea of marriage back in the day is very different to the idea of marriage now. But also the idea of dating, like my parents had an arranged marriage. They did not date. Mm -hmm. I don't think they can ever taught me how to date. Mm -hmm. So for me to like navigate it and like figure it out, then you like make up all these kind of like internal mechanisms to kind of like deal with it things like that mm -hmm. or to, to literally have a 360 when you're in your early 20s to be like okay so why have you not found a boy and you're like mm. you did not tell me you told me no boys <laughs> why all of a sudden are you telling me boys like this was not the agreement or it's like if you go to a wedding it's like oh it's your turn next time and you're and like, I'm like oh i hate that it's literally the worst feeling like yeah. the fact that like i think i said it in one of my really really early podcast episodes when people say that like i literally feel this small Mm -hmm. I literally feel like a piece of meat because it's like you do you devalue everything that I've achieved and my whole value is whether or not I can get man like what happen if I'm like a millionaire what happen if I'm like an I have a really successful business that doesn't mean anything if I'm single mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I think that is like why why am I next mm -hmm. like and those really like bother me and I think the older I'm getting the more it does bother me because mm -hmm. I'm like if you don't have anything nice to say just don't say it at all because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you don't know how triggering that can be for another person talk to me about an interview that you've done which really like stays with you I think the one about fertility I know which one you mean I heard that one that one will always stay with me because I don't think women's health is spoken about yeah a lot and especially within like south asian culture and it's almost that thing about like if aunties don't talk about marriage they will talk about kids mm -hmm. but the things they don't realize is like how common miscarriages are how difficult it is to get yeah. pregnant how all of that like comes into play just hearing that like just as a woman hearing that from another woman i think i got so much value from that because it made me realize that like oh like it's actually quite difficult to get pregnant mm -hmm. like it's really not as easy as everyone says i remember i went out of that podcast episode and i think i was like wow i think i just had a whole science lesson mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But tell me about where you see the podcast going in the future like what are the things that you sort of want to do with it honestly i think i just i want it to ex exist in this kind of like in this world where I just want other like South Asian girls, or not even South Asian girls, but like girls and guys who really resonate with my story, who want to kind of like, and I've always branched it into three things. It's like to learn something new, to really kind of like feel comfort and relatability. Cause I know that's what podcasts were to me. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, it was like a place of being like, I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just like hearing, someone else's story and being like okay cool like I'm not the only person in the world going through this and sometimes you do feel like that because the world is so big there's only and there's only so many situations that can happen so I'm pretty sure there's someone in the world going through the same thing that you're going through yeah right yeah, yeah. and I think if I'm able to help someone feel less alone like that was the part that was the reason for that podcast but also like just someone who just wants to like hear things from like someone like them tell us a little bit about what you're doing now so i career switch so back in 2020 i was in finance 2021 
half of 2020 on housing finance and my mental health dipped like my mental health was bad and you know it's bad and i'll tell every, anybody this if you do not want to wake up in the morning and go to work there's something wrong mm-hmm. if you're just like if you're literally cba to do anything like to me i felt like there was something wrong i remember there was a week when i was crying non-stop because i just didn't want to go to work even though my work was at home and my yeah. laptop was there but i just wanted to be in bed all day and i was like this there's something wrong and i can feel that there was something wrong and it got to the point where i was a bit like this is not good for me and I shouldn't feel this sad mm-hmm. at home mm-hmm. at, at work so I kind of just like had another effort moment and like reached out to like different teams within my company one of them being the diversity and inclusion team who really liked me and now I do diversity and inclusion full-time oh, brilliant. Okay. which works really well with my podcast yeah, which is definitely. all about sharing South Asian stories and representation and amplifying voices of underrepresented communities. And I guess when you were going through what you were experiencing, how did you know in that in those moments that it was the career that needed to be switched? Because everything else was fine. Like I had the my friendships were good, my relationships were good, like things at home were fine. That and I don't know if you've done this before, but there's like this exercise, which is like a wheel and you rate it. So it's a wheel and you have loads of different elements of your life, like home life, physical mm-hmm. health. Um, what's it like your environment at home, friendships, love life, career. And I remember I did that with my best friend. And when we go went through it, like career was like zero. And everything else was in balance. So you, what do you rate it from like one to one ten? One to ten of how happy you are in it. Ah, okay. So when everything else was quite like between like seven, eight, kind of things like that. When my mental health was like really low and my career was really low, that kind of like helped kind of like visualize that correlation. But also because like you just, in, in my gut, I just knew I wasn't happy. Like I felt very dismissed in my old job. I felt very unsupported. I felt like, they didn't care about me or my progression. I felt like a number. Mm -hmm, And mm -hmm. that was a bit like, if I'm spending 35 to 40 hours a week, which is a big part of your day, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. working and I'm not happy, why am I doing it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I just wanted to kind of get, get an idea if you've got any advice for anybody who is suffering with their own mental health right now and they're looking to make a change in their life. I think it's twofold. I think... First is that you actually need to take action. And I think like a lot of times the intention is always there. Like I remember like with my mental health, when it got really, really bad, I think the intention was, oh, something's wrong. Like I really need to fix it. But I think it was almost like I didn't know what to do. Yeah. And I yeah, think I that was also like, you feel like you're in this like really, really like helpless place where you just feel trapped and you can't get out. And the for me, the only way that I can release it was like through crying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I think the first thing is like to set the intention of like, okay, cool, I'm actually gonna do something about it. And the second thing is take baby steps. I think like when it comes to your mental health, it's there's more and more awareness of it now, but because people can't see it, people will just assume you're okay. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what really sucks because like, I remember I started getting panic attacks in my exams. I was doing finance exams at the time, and I've never had a panic attack before. And that freaked me out. Yeah. Right? Like, I don't... And that's a really, really scary, like, place to be in. Yeah. But I think it's almost, like, that whole idea of, like, you can't get zero to 100, like, real quick. Like, it's going to take baby steps and, like, step by step. And actually, like, the thing that helped me was actually making a plan. Okay. to be like okay step one is this step two is this step three is this and really like educating myself on more around mental health as well and like understanding that like mental health isn't like it's never this it's always going to go up and down up and down up and down mm-hmm. it's the same as your physical health there's going to be times where you get the flu and there's times that you're like super cool and super strong and that's okay and I think it was almost like a taking it baby steps, like making sure that I'm doing stuff and being actionable 
and like taking those steps that I've now planned out but then also just taking it day by day Mm -hmm. like living with low mental health like it's actually it is hard and it's even harder because people can't see it Mm -hmm. like if you broke your arm or you broke your leg like people will open the door for you or people will be like oh are you okay or can I do something when your mental health is low people because they can't see it Mm -hmm. people are always going to be like she's fine Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when I think that and that's almost harder because you're you feel more alone Mm -hmm. as well because at the end of the day all you want is that support yeah and a way out of this like trappedness Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think also even like recognizing it as well is a massive step oh, in the right direction because like, yeah. it's not always easy to spot within yourself. Oh yeah, 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 definitely. I think there's almost like a, it's almost like a spiral, and I think the more negative you start thinking, sometimes the worse it kind of gets. And I think it was a Jay Shetty quote, and he was saying like that negativity is kind of like an addiction, and like negativity feeds on negativity. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm if you're negative you do need to kind of like again realize it and kind of be like okay cool I don't want this anymore Mm -hmm. how am I going to get out Mm -hmm. of it Mm -hmm. and I think it's almost like that whole idea of like just talking to people I remember I really reached to my best friends like whenever I was really really sad and I think my parents were really like they were worried they're like why are you crying every single day like what is wrong with you yeah yeah. and I was like I hate my job um and I think for them like also like their support to be like it's okay just like find a new job yeah like that also like meant so much to me yeah as well so I think yeah I think it's like support system taking action and just taking day by day because the biggest step is recognizing that you want to get out of it and you want to change yeah well well done for making that change for yourself you you know it's and thanks for being so open and vulnerable about it as well i think it's a really good thing for people to learn about from your perspective when it comes to balancing your creative passions with your day job do you have any time management tips or productivity hacks that you can share with us i think now the thing that like i'm trying to do in terms of like time management is try and make sure everything is in balance okay and i think i'm being a little bit more intentional and actually like setting myself specific days yeah to be like every two like every saturday bi-weekly i'm gonna do podcast stuff right okay or i will kind of like make sure that i do if it's something really urgent i will kind of just like set myself to be like i'm gonna just do emails for like 30 minutes in the morning before my day job or i'm going to just work on this part for like two hours something that really helped me was journaling actually okay so and I kind of made myself a rule which is why boundaries are super important is I would write down so I made a kind of like a day list and I was like it's that Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday and I'll put five things down and I really broke them down to like the smallest smallest things I think sometimes also when we make to-do lists, we make them so broad that actually the actual task is like five different tasks. They do say that as well. They say be so specific with your oh, goals. Oh, 100%, yeah. Because then it's just easy to procrastinate or just to look over them. I'd be like, oh my God, that's too much. Like, for example, cleaning like a photo album. We all do it. There's like thousands of pictures in there. I feel like I'm going to clean my photo album. That's overwhelming. Yeah. I feel like I'm just going to clean out January. So much easier. Mm-hmm. So I kind of started doing that. So every day I'll do five tasks and I'll literally break them down to like the most simple. If it's like scroll on social media, that will be a task. Mm -hmm. If it's post the Instagram post, that will be a task. Create the caption will also be a task. Because that makes me feel like, okay, cool. I've achieved stuff, Mm -hmm. but it's not too, too much. Mm -hmm. Especially now or last year, trying to balance like a podcast on top of like a technically a new career has also been really difficult to the point where you do need to kind of make sacrifices which is why I'm saying that with time management you can people can give you like all the hacks in the world like you need to grind you don't need to sleep more no you need to prioritize yourself Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and make sure that you are okay and like what's a priority for you is doing that yeah right and just to like break stuff down Mm -hmm. because not gonna lie like trying to balance everything in the long term 
is very very unsustainable Mm -hmm. so you have to do it in a way that is sustainable for you and your lifestyle and I, I like how you back that up with then don't be too hard on yourself because then yeah if you do find yourself in those situations you're yeah. only going to make yourself feel worse yeah. and make the project not as uh, productive if you are adding your own stress on yourself and I think that. sometimes like even with social media like you'll see all these people like being like I can balance this and that and that and I'm overwhelmed listening to them like I'm like how and then two weeks later they'll post I'm so burnt out yeah, yeah, and yeah. you're just like okay but then it's almost like that whole idea I think you said it before it's like glorifying like the productivity and things like that you don't have to right I'd rather have make sure that like I'm doing stuff in sort of small increments and still loving what I'm doing than doing like everything in a short amount of time and then having to take like a six month break because I hate what I'm doing yes yeah yeah like I think it's just everyone's circumstances are so different that we can't really fall into the trap of like comparing that to like other people's because a lot of these people who glorify this grind actually have a team I do everything myself for my Mm -hmm. podcast Mm -hmm. I think I didn't realize that until very very recently as well that people do have help when it comes to something that you know now that you did not know before yeah and that thing has like really helped you what would that be for you i think mine would be don't be scared to like reach out and like make friends with people who are doing something quite similar to you okay and the reason i say that is because relationship and community is everything right and you want people to be there for you with like supporting you but also understanding what you're going through yeah kind of thing so I wish I'm so that the thing that I didn't know before was just the power of relationships and the power of just like building this like community of people who like are very very similar to you and just how much knowledge everyone has Mm -hmm. and I think that's the thing I think people don't underestimate like how much value their life story has and I think that's something that I know now what is something that you don't know right now and you would like to work on or learn more about to help you in the future I need to learn how to do all this camera (laughs) setups like seriously because I think because when I started I started during lockdown which means I did a lot of like zoom interviews and like virtual interviews and I can do that this camera stuff, the lighting stuff, the mic setup stuff, like, that is something that I now need to do. Well, that's sorted. Like, you <laughs> you, you just come and then we'll, we'll we'll go through it all, like, literally. Yeah, that's literally the thing that, like, I need to learn more. And also video editing. Okay. As well. So, I've learned how audio editing and I now need to learn, like, video editing. So, those are the two. But, yeah, I really rate everyone who does, like, this camera setup because this is, like, a... <laughs> This is like a studio right here. <laughs> I find that when people start creative projects, things can come out, these projects that can send them down different paths and mm-hmm. open new opportunities for them. So what has been some of the things for you that has come out of your podcast? Do you know what? Like so much. I think it's because like I didn't really have an expectation of like where it was going to go, but like doing it and the fact that like people really resonate with what I'm saying or they like say really really kind messages which is really really nice but I think also the fact that it got like recognized for awards yeah like Asian Media Award never in a million years I still don't know to this day who nominated me but thank you to that person (laughs) um and also just like being able to do like live like speaking events or like virtual speaking events I remember I did a speaking event for like a big company things like that so just, I just find that whole side, like, it's just opened up, like, all these doors and all these opportunities to things I would never have imagined, but low-key always wanted in my mm-hmm, life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but I was never, like, scared. I was always, like, scared to admit that I wanted it. I think that was also really, really cool. I think I would, I know for a fact I would not have got my new job if it wasn't for my podcast. Um, because I was already showcasing, like, the passion that I have for helping underrepresented communities yeah right and doing that voluntarily as my creative project the thing that I was so passionate about right and I think it's almost like a blessing now that I have a job that I genuinely love so much and ties in so well to what like 
my creative passion or my side hustle and my like my day job have kind of like just combined now mm-hmm. which is mm-hmm. kind of cool um I think that but I think the most the biggest thing that I think I've learned is like my confidence mm-hmm. and talking to new people I think before that I was actually really scared to like talk to new people or even approach new people or even like dm new people I'd be like uh, well it's like no I really don't care like I'm like there's almost like this like, new sense of like confidence where you're just a bit like I just don't care I was like hey like let's be friends like if someone asks like let's go for coffee I'm like yeah sure so it's almost like this like I think I just love the idea of meeting new people now mm-hmm. which I didn't before okay so I think that's also I think that's probably personally the best thing that's come out of it. On the topic of confidence, you've gone now into speaking events and even just coming across uh, well on a podcast and articulating yourself. How did you develop the confidence to do all these things that you hadn't necessarily planned to do? That's a great question. I think it was almost like baby steps and I think it's intention. So for me, I think confidence happens when you have like good intent, like good intentions. Okay. Right. And I think for me, or I know that's how it like works for me. Like I just kind of like knew my place. I was like, I felt very comfortable, especially when it comes to like meeting new people. Okay. Right. I think it's like you almost feel really comfortable around it because I think with Pog, and I think because I was having quite vulnerable talks on the podcast anyways, being able to have vulnerable talks with people in real life wasn't as hard anymore. And I think confidence does come from like vulnerability in some sense, because I think the whole idea is that we're sometimes so scared of being vulnerable Mm -hmm. that we kind of like close ourselves off and then we are not confident Mm -hmm. and we are more reserved. Whilst like if you are vulnerable and you kind of just put yourself out there, people can kind of like feel your confidence like wow like she's actually putting herself out there I think for me it was like every single podcast episode I went into my intention was they are my new friend right and it almost made it a lot easier because you're like okay like I'm just talking to a friend yeah so you're not thinking all about okay I've got to get this question in there or anything it's just like quite a natural it's just really really natural like a natural chat like you I think for me because I did a lot of research on that person before and and I like, I think I always did like an intro call with um, the people, whether it's like who I'm speaking to, a podcast guest, a person that I'm a guest on their podcast. It made it easier because then you are actually are able to use that time to really build a friendship. Mm-hmm. And I think like, obviously the podcasts are changing and there's a lot more vis- like video podcasts now. But before when there was just audio, you needed to build that bond mm-hmm. because otherwise it's actually quite difficult to have vulnerable conversations with someone you've never met before well that's one thing i was going to talk to you about because yeah the topics are so personal and how does one sort of start that type of a conversation with someone they haven't you know they're not meeting face to face or they don't they don't know them very well i would always make it my mission to get to know them beforehand whether that's like through dms or my personal favorite some sort of voice face-to-face contact right right nothing beats like voice face-to-face contact um and yeah, just to have like a really, really like good talk. But I think it was also like the people that like I spoke to were also really big advocates for the topics that I wanted to talk about. Like for example, PCOS, like I interviewed Neelam, who is the founder of Sisters, one of the only UK South Asian charities for PCOS. That's She's so passionate about this topic. And I think that's also what made it a lot more easier because you can tell that they really, really like wanted to help people Mm -hmm. and I think it's almost like when your missions align as well I think that also makes it so much easier because if you're vulnerable or they're vulnerable they kind of see okay this is why she's doing this podcast or like this is her intention and it matches with their intention it's so easy Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. whilst I think if there if that isn't there and the intention is very difficult I think we're in this generation now where people have very good bs detectors and people can kind of spot fake people from like a mile away so when the two intentions don't really match 
something does feel off. Yeah. For those people who would like to know more about you and find you on social media oh, yeah. and, and Apple Podcasts, Spotify, where do they find you? So my podcast called It's Pretty Personal and it's available to listen to on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and Google Podcasts and Amazon Podcasts, basically anywhere that you can get a podcast from, it's there. <laughs> um, and Instagram is at Pretty Personal and TikTok is also at, at Pretty Personal. Well, thank you so much for coming. No, honestly, thank you so much for having me. I, <laughs> I really enjoyed this conversation. 